Every time you watch a movie online, shop online, or search for something, you are interacting with a distributed system hidden by a web page or an application. They are everywhere. All these companies are running highly scalable distributed systems in order to handle millions of users and petabytes of data, but providing you a seamless user experience as if you are interacting with a single system. Even the simplest website today hosted on a cloud is running on a distributed system because cloud itself is a distributed system designed for companies and individual software developers. The beauty of a well-designed distributed system is that users are not even aware of it and makes it feel like you are communicating with a single system. A centralized system is the opposite of a distributed system and analyzing a centralized system will help us appreciate the need of distributed systems. Let's say you want to create an online service to buy and sell bitcoins, for which you build a website, a sleek mobile app and host it in your machine at home. In few months, your service gets popular, your user base grows and now your machine can no longer handle the extra load. So you decide to upgrade your computer with new CPU, more RAM and this is vertical scaling. But it is limited. There is limited amount of memory and computer power you can get from a single machine. So at best, you are delaying the load issue. Moreover, your computer is a single point of failure. If there is a power outage tomorrow in your area, your entire service will go down. And if your users are trying to access your service from other part of the world, most likely they will experience high latency or slowness. In contrast, a well-designed distributed system can scale to billions of users. They can scale horizontally and grow or shrink on demand, which takes care of single point of failure and latency issues. A distributed system is a system of several processes running on different computers that communicate and coordinate their actions by messaging through the network, sharing a state, or working together to achieve a common goal. Let's talk about process. When you compile a Java application, it becomes a class file. A jar file is the container of all the class files and this gets stored into your file system, just like any audio, video, and text files. When you launch the application, the operating system creates an instance of that application in the memory. And that instance is process, which is completely isolated to any other processes running in the computer, be it the same application or instances of different applications. Processes running on the same machine can communicate with each other through the network, the file system, or the memory. But since it's the same machine, it's not a distributed system. They cannot scale beyond the capacity of single machine and are vulnerable to single point of failures. Now, if you can decouple and put each of the processes in different machines, they can scale horizontally. And if any machine goes down, others can take over and maintain availability of your application. Since everything is on different machine, network is the only way for the processes to communicate with each other. Once the communication is established, we must ensure these processes maintain a shared state and work together to achieve common goal. If processes don't know about each other, then it just becomes collection of computers, not a distributed system. So, the goal here is to design distributed systems and build the algorithms in such a way that processes can collaborate with each other. Designing distributed system is no easy task, but can be interesting. We will talk about some of the best practices, algorithms, and patterns to build distributed systems in my future video.